Good morning, family. So here we are. We are in less than 48 hours to go. And my word, this project has been smashing it. So when we last joined, we were at one point, I think it's about 8 million um, in, in pounds. And you can see now we are fast approaching that $3 million mark. Will we make it? We'll have to see, um, but I think there is a good likelihood of that. Um, and as you can see, even as I'm speaking now, uh, this is still clocking away with the new contents that have been added, and people still going on and adjusting their pledge. And uh, you may see some fluctuations. People adjusting now, so it's we already have now a uh, an all-in pledge added to the mix. But let's go ahead and look at what the new content is that's been added to. So, of course, Friday we saw uh, the week in review and the big reveal being the Season 4 expansion to add to Season 3 content. So, the Elder Gods slumber and dream across eternity. Their existence is an unknowable to mankind as our... As a humble ant. One of them yet wakes and is said to cloak himself in human flesh, walking among us, living as we do, watching, waiting, plotting and planning. And the god of a thousand forms is displeased. Yes, there were many people that uh, predicted uh, what was to come successfully. Mankind reaches too high, they think themselves the bastards of the world. At least the ants know their place. Here we go. So we have two uh, new Elder One figures. The important difference being there is one Elder One. That's right, we have the Elder One that changes form. And uh, if you purchase this expansion now as part of the Kickstarter, you get a slight discount down from $80 MSRP to uh, 65 uh, You get less new investigators, which again was something that people were asking for. And as you can see, more monster figures instead. And obviously that's fantastic news with the new unknown monster cards making these playable. Uh, seven new monsters playable across all four seasons um which is fantastic and obviously you've got loads of episodes now so uh season four fully fledged expansion to Cthulhu death may die and we are asking backers we're offering backers 65 dollars product is estimated to reach out 80 dollars it brings a plethora of content for the experience New investigators, new monsters, new relics, new insanities, which again is a massive R, something we, d we didn't see in the original Cthulhu Death May Die um, campaign. You get new tiles. One of the things they said about the tiles is the tiles are uh, locked to this expansion box, so you won't have to be uh, mixing and matching tiles across the different seasons, which again is, is, is I'm sure, will be great news and a breath of fresh air for, for many people that uh, did experience that uh, from season one, season two. Um, so, Nyarlathep was added to the fray. He's featured in two forms, the human and the haunter of the dark. So Nyarlathep comes with two figures. Uh, we get 20 monster figures, six investigators, the outer box is six episode boxes so that's another six episodes massive level of variety each with their own little story with their discovery cards mythos cards which is great um 17 tiles um the one unknown board um I'm not entirely sure what that is to be completely honest with you. the unknown board is that in addition, the unknown monsters, in addition to the one you already get with Season 3. Hmm, okay. Uh, six investigators on their dashboards, six new unknown relics, um, four new insanity cards, and four unknown mythos cards. 
So we've got new insanity as being uncontrollable fear, hyperactivity, shared psychosis, and a dissociative identity, which is very interesting. So you actually alternate between two other chosen insanities as they trigger, they swap. Uh, very, um, yeah, very, very interesting, very different to anything else we've already seen. Um, lots of new... Um, Relics to add there. So we've got the uh, uh, the ritual dagger that becomes the wicked dagger, the handheld magnifier that becomes the paranormal detector, uh, the old rosary that becomes blessed caplet, um, the glowing ring that becomes a spectral ring, the wooden pipe that becomes transcendental herbs, the vial which becomes the doom vial. There we go. So the uh, old rosary soothes investigators any stress or wounds that might later be perceived as a blessed chaplet uh, at the loss of our sanity, blessing you and other investigators in your space to a simple wooden pipe that awards the investigator two re-rolls whilst being smoked at insanity thresholds and it's packed or believed to be with transcendental herbs that prolongate and expand its effects. So new investigators we see then is Gary West. So something should remain hidden and undisturbed deep down. And Gary learned this the hard way. So Gary West is quote is who'd have thought, who'd have thought dynamite would come in so handy outside of the mines? <laughs> a miner and a foreman. So granted with his new field of work as an investigator, he now uses it to deal damage to any enemy within two spaces. Wow. And his swiftness helps him to run around the board whilst throwing explosives, of course. And being tough, it's a better chance of leaving direct encounters with enemies with little damage. Fantastic. So great. We've got a dynamite thrower. And we have a Nika Miko from East London and South African origination. Spells are just math and language and lifeblood, but mostly just math. <laughs> Anika's curiosity often gets the best of her, which comes a great risk for a paranormal investigator. That's how she became an arcane student, gathering more knowledge and more, even more as she encounters the Eldritch, and then using that knowledge to further investigate and improve her own skills. With an extensive background of research, her arcane mastery is only natural, granting her extra successes as she gains her knowledge. Her humble build grants her a natural swiftness as well, allowing for easy manoeuvring across the board. So there she is, a figure and the painted sculpt. Excellent. And we have John Fernsby from Cambridge, UK. Against both men and gods, the principles of war apply. John is a born leader, which is very useful both for the battlefield and while working with younger investigators, allowing him to better plan actions and his partners. As a trained soldier, he also has marksmen who's great at stealth missions. Under his leadership and guidance, the whole group moves as one, and the enemy won't even see what hit them. There he is. I love in the uh, the chain or the monocle. <laughs> the waistcoat and tie. This would definitely be my standard attire. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't grow a beard. That would be my my natural form, I think, in life. <laughs> Had I have a chose a choice. <laughs> very very good. Like that. So we have Sylvia Doyle from Tullamar Island. I know all their tricks and all their weapons, and I no longer fear death. Now, what does she look like? That's right. The most unexpected ally of all investigators could ask for. She's a reformed cultist. Love that idea. Brilliant. Uh, she's seen the horrors of her own actions, but now uses the vast knowledge and ability to gain cultists, even if it does mean disposing of former colleagues. Her days as a cultist gave her arcane mastery to channel the eldritch to f her favour, and brawling capabilities as well needed to encounter against investigators. Funny how things change. But yeah, absolutely loving that. <laughs> Brilliant work. 
there she is with her miniature lots of people really liked this figure uh, on the live call Rosario Guru, uh, Gura, uh, my father taught me to fix cars and use guns. A very wise man, my father. Not everyone can face unspeakable horrors and keep in good spirits, but such as Rosario's boisterous personality. She never backs down for a good fight, never flinches when enemies come her way, attracted by all the noise she makes, and perhaps by the things she shouts at them. She's a tough one, that's for sure, and her marksman skill comes in so there's no surprise for those who try to run away. So there we go, we can see the uh, the figure there, there was lots of comments um, online just really appreciating the sculpt. There we go, and we have Bruno Vitali. So, Paloma Sicily, only ever trusted myself, it's worked out so far. <laughs> the tattoos all over him. Love it. Bruno's never lost his vicious nature. Actually, his experience in the trenches and in jail didn't soften his spirit. If anything, they made him better prepared for the unsuring battle against the occult. He prefers fighting alone, as it's easier to get all out against the opponent when there's no one else in his space. Even better, if any even the the opponent is unaware of his presence, being stealthy as he is. Combine those with his brawling abilities, Bruno is able to leave his enemies on the ground and move on to the next. And there's his uh, <laughs> skull. Fantastic. Loving that. The uh, the broken bottle and the knife. Come on then, if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> Brilliant. And we have, of course, the new six brand new episodes more content more story more variety and loving the locations around the globe being included which is fantastic so interrupt the nefarious plans of cultists hijacking a zeppelin to take it to the dreamlands causing horrifying transformations in its passageway on the way investigate the rumors of a botanic ghost haunting a small village and contend with their ever-growing brambles Rescue tourists kidnapped and so to serve as human sacrifice at a gigantic bonfire. Recover a powerful black pearl necklace stolen from an old investigator which was murdered for. Explore a pyramid built atop confluences of mystical powers. Uncover the mysterious of a window that apparently leads to the infinite. These are only the initial plots of season four episodes. Many more secrets, dark twists, and difficult choices wait for you. And we've only scratched the surface. And again, on the live call, there was some some really good ideas coming out there. The idea of the, the pyramid of fear, featuring um, almost a, a, a Moon Knight um, soldier torn with split personality disorder as the new insanity now um but yeah fantastic ideas and i can definitely see the uh, eddie expansion pack uh, if you've not come across that yet for the iron maiden content um playing a part certainly in some of these just being able to mix that content in thematically fantastically really really looking forward to that uh, and as we mentioned we've got a whole bunch more um map tiles uh, as i said they are just for this box there's no need to match and mix these with others um and hopefully we'll see obviously more um content being shared in the community that we're able to use these uh, further afield as it were so new monsters that were featured we have the man of lane so intelligent and brutal without remorse i would love to pit their army against mine so the quote from john really liking the uh, the look of that so coming straight from the dreamlands the men of leng are a nightmare come true they're clever strong and full of malice which they employ to both strike dubious deals with human cultists and terrorize innocent people before devouring them their mere sight that such creatures is enough to introduce insanity so engaging them in combat means extra stress for investigators when re-rolling and there's the uh, the figure and the painted up mini fantastic job loving that there we go okay we have the sand dweller where i came from there are places in the desert you don't dare go alone yes wow <laughs> 
love the look of that. So, uh, the desert holds dangers and mysteries that should be avoided by all, but are instead coveted by cultists. Sandor is one of those dangers. The ancient race hidden deep within the antique ruins, worshippers of elder gods and enemies investigators who dare disturb their goals. Fierce resistance, they will instantly wound back any investigator who damages them. Wow. There is their figure. Loving the paint job on that. Great work. <laughs> we have the albino penguin, and I confess I hadn't heard of this. Uh, it came up a lot on the chatter before this reveal. Um, the albino penguin. They're institutionalised. Hurt them, and they'll hurt you back. I know the type. A quote from Bruno. The albino penguins are another ancient race that, had they been left alone, would pose no problems to humanity. But the cultists saw the aggressive potential of the species and started using them for the benefit of the protection of their cults, turning them into deadly enemies. And now the albino penguins dwell in madness, injuring those creatures means risk serious damage. As they're able to cause serious wounds in return, based on the number of Tentacle results so they, as they drive you insane, they also cause you physical damage as well. So, there we go, some <laughs> delightful albino penguins added to the fray. And we didn't get to see their miniature for this one, but definitely looking forward to it. Uh, unfortunately, it had escaped. So, if you see a spider laying running around, you may not want to approach it. <laughs> I don't even like the regular kind of spiders. I'm bringing extra dynamite, is the quote from Gary there. So, uh, called spiders for the lack of closer parallel, these gigantic creatures are more intelligent, ferocious, and deadly than anything found on Earth. Their poison is both deadly and the madness inducing, hindering rerolls that would cause insanity to rise. Wow, look at that. <laughs> it's just like. Uh, fantastic. There's the uh, painted mini. Great work. And the white polypus thing. The quote, none speak its name, for none know it. Its gaze is death. Would such a thing be so deadly if it wasn't full of malice? Or is the insanity that it brings merely a side effect? It's hard to describe this creature, even harder to determine if creature is the right word for it. In any case, it's dangerous enough that it needs to be put down, but whoever destroys it won't go unscathed, nor people close by suffering two stresses for each thing destroyed. It's just dripping everywhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Loving that sculpt. Brilliant. And then we have the monstrous frog. Wow, in the absence of any other word, I guess we can call it a frog. <laughs> These creatures share a great affinity with the Eldritch and Ancient, although it's possible to tell if they have any faith or sympathy towards the Elder Gods. One thing is certain, however, they are vicious beasts, and the damage they deal is doubled whenever an Elder Sign is rolled. Ouch. Wow. There we go. Ah, oh, wow. Just crouch there, their tongue wrapping around their leg. It's fantastic sculpts. Again, they're uh, looking great other hair. <laughs> and a bit of base artwork as well, which is nice. Um, excellent. And we have the ancient. One, they liken themselves to the elder gods, and perhaps they're not far off that it's kind of squid like upright form, very, very tall. Um, so, terrestrial beings who covered the power of the elder gods, it's not surprising that the ancient ones are willing to help cultists achieve their goals. Perhaps that's even their sympathy there. These creatures are far long gone with no resemblance of anything human. In fact, their eldritch nature makes it so that they can only be attacked when they are close to a gate. Wow, so there's got to be some luring going on in order to, to get these things to a place where they can even be attacked 
and again just great just the subtle texture of these uh, um, suckers on the tentacles um, just great work in the sculpt there and then well, of course we have the elder box Nyarlathep so and where Nyarlathep went rest vanished for the rest small hours were rent with screams of nightmare before we face the elder one of this expansion let's beat the minions of the guard and serve their master here they are, moon beasts. They don't make no noise. Not even when you got them. Gives me the creeps. That's the uh, quote from Bruno. So they have four life. You get three of them. And um, what attack you're being attacked. Each, horse, each uh, elder sign also counts as an insanity. So they're dark traders and servants being greater than themselves, spreading madness in the will of the outer gods. And whenever they engage in combat, either attacking or being attacked, each elder rolled also increases the opponent's insanity. There we go. Fantastic. <laughs> and there was comments on the live stream of the resemblance here of man thing in its form. <laughs> Fantastic, loving that. And then we have Nyarlathep. These creatures are merely pawns in the hands of the real danger. Cultists and Vedicators alike bow down and tremble in fear for Nyarlathep. The crawling chaos is here. Here we go. So, um, he doesn't want to destroy humankind so much as drive us all mad. There we go, it's Nyarlathep in his human form, and even in his human form, I believe he does stand a little bit taller than uh, the um, investigators. And of course, then you have its transformed form, which is huge. As an elder one, Nyarlathep has two different forms, they're both active in the game. On his final form, the Hunter of the, the Haunter of the Dark starts on a summoning track. Its human form starts on the board, setting investigators on fire with every attack, and it cannot be attacked until the ritual is disrupted. So you best run when this thing appears. <laughs> Love it. The other thing is said to have many forms of manifestations, and as such, changes the effects of the powers at each stage. Uh, obviously, ignore these prototype dice placements here. They will be changed at the final. Um, people to pick up a lot on the video and on the um, uh, comments on um, social media as well. Uh, but obviously you can have a look at the different one revealed effects and of course at the end of each turn as it progresses and you get closer and closer to killing it. So on stage two, Nyarlathep takes on his monstrous form, replacing the human form and his fires spread madly. When cultists attacked uh, in that stage, a channel of the master's ability to set investigators on fire. Um, so this sounds a bit like a smack back to the very, very first episode of the first season um, where fire everywhere. So he changes his power to healing effect, able to recover wounds as his cultists gather near and tend to the other one. So yeah, if you didn't think it was going to be hard enough to kill this thing, when you get to stage three, it starts healing itself. <laughs> and at a final stage, in our thought of that is at most dangerous as his fires grow and inflict investigators with madness. So there we go, there's the, uh, the sculpt in uh, human form. <laughs> Fantastic, and the sculpt in all its glory as you come into the elder form. And there's the size of this thing compared to a normal investigator. Fantastic, it is huge. There we go, it's painted up. Um, it is resins. And if you back this, of course, all of this content will be coming to retail, so you don't have to buy now. But if you do back this now as part of the Kickstarter, as an extra sweetener, all bags the Season 4 campaign will also receive the Kickstarter exclusive Skull Bracelet and the Ivory Figure Unknown Relic cards, as well as relying Seizures Insanity cards that have previously been released as a limited promo through the Dice 
tower. So we have the skull bracelet, which gives you extra rerolls, which comes the nefarious skulls. Uh, the ivory figure, which gives you extra green dice, becomes the Aldrich image. And the insanity reliance seizures. There we go. So that's it, folks. That's what you get in Season 4. So if you want more options, more of relics and insanities and Elder Ones and Elders uh, episodes, investigators and monsters, make sure to add Season 4 to your pledge. Remember, uh, while well, backers only pay 65 bucks for this, um, it will be expected to retail with 80 bucks uh, because Kickstarter will come with those exclusive and limited contents as well. And at update 42, our fight against the Akon continues with more monsters unveil themselves. The inhabitants of the nameless city was unlocked at $2 million. So, and it was included there, an uh, unknown monster card with three figures. Uh, what we don't know about them could fill several volumes and still be lacking. That's the uh, comment from Ruth that I colorize like mini Tarasks for those in the uh, Dungeons & Dragons um, background there. So, when they were first found, it was believed that the inhabitants of the nameless city were nothing more than a relic of the distant past. However, the deeper the investigators went down to the city's temples, and all the inhabitants were found alive. They did respond to the trespassing in kind, and their ancient origin gives connections to the arcane, allowing them to deal damage to all investigators around them, should they roll two or more elder signs when attacking. So, nice little change up on the uh, elder sign rolling there so they obviously were unlocked and added to the fray and we have a new investigator archie with his dashboard 2.04 million so he's archie fort from new york hell i fought worse in dockside taverns you ever been to singapore ha very much the uh, their typical sailor dude. Many sailors are pretty damn sure they've got a monster in their nets at some point or another. For Archie, that's true. The details in his tail was a foggy at best, but can be expected when the mere sight of the thing that he caught was enough to drive a man insane. But as it turns out, insanity empowered Archie, and he went back to catch more elder things and kill them. This background in fighting of the sea gave him rowdy signature skill, which grants him rerolls for each enemy in his space. It also gives him new status around um, sorry, a new it also gives him a new status surrounded when there are three or more enemies in his space. As he furthers his rally skill being surrounded it allows Archie to perform free attacks at the cost of stress, prevent attacks and further his levels of brawling and toughness as to other skills. Whilst toughness allows him to prevent damage close up, brawling gives him of oomph when fighting in melee. So making Archie a hell of an investigator when it comes to dealing to large groups of enemies. The squishier they are, the merrier for Archie. So the investigator unlocked. Um, we were then presented with Nofke. So they're on the brink of extinction. It seems they like it that way. See <laughs> a quote from Sanja. Look at that beast. A race of bear-like creatures with six limbs, sharp horns and a penchant for cannibalism. So... Few of the ones who encountered these monstrous creatures and survived to tell the tale, be it for their predatory behaviour or because of their natural habitat. However, there's a thin line between fear and devotion, and the Nofke rewards its followers with glorious and terrible gifts. Beware if you're on an insanity threshold when they appear, for their strikes get particularly vicious. Investigators are on the edge. There's the multiple arms, the rock upon which it stands. <laughs> and of course, the uh, painted figure for adding to the fray. So, update 45 saw uh, the 
proposed unlocking of Vanessa Ortiz, who's already been added. So there's relatives to be found in the cosmos despite all the horrors. Investigators often think that they're in touch with something larger than itself, beyond human comprehension. Although it's not necessarily incorrect, it's particularly true for Vanessa being a cosmic researcher for as long as she has, which is actually very little time compared to the cosmos existence. Vanessa knows that the time of the older ones and the terror should come to an end eventually, and that helps her keep her health in check. Being able to heal her stress or wounds by one at the end of her turn, for each summoning symbol on the Mythos cards. Nice change up. The more she studies, the more prepared she is, eventually gaining bonus dice as well. When she becomes an expert, it reaches a maximum level of her skill. She's even capable using her knowledge to manipulate the ritual and duty uh, and delay the great old one, forcing it to only advance on the track for each four summoning symbols instead of three. Combined with an arcane master in swiftness, but as it can be a serious problem for Coric Hosmers to overcome. So that's a real significant change up in gameplay that you're getting there uh, from this. Additional investigator added to the fray. So when we had uh, update 46, we had a new monster figure and card added to the fray. Do you feel like we're working towards a new um, episode? Rang Tegoth. Rang Tegoth. If it bleeds, we can kill it. The quote from Leon. A creature discovered in modern day Alaska and brought to the British Museum in London before an investigator was made aware of the discovery. So experienced investigators know how to proceed with caution in museums and public collections. The curious public, however, is never aware of hidden dangers and the things that they admire through thin layers of protective glass. Run to goth is one such danger. Uh, much that it's discovered could deal with game. Rantagoth protects the Elder Ones as long as Ran is on the board. The Elder Ones become immune to damage of any sort. And as we can see here, we have the uh, <laughs> the wonderful render. Of those many, many eyes, those fantastic textures. I mean, it's just another one. Well. I mean, it's going to be an absolute beauty to paint. And you get an idea of the size of this thing. <laughs> compared to the investigators on the board and there he is I'm just loving just the, the spots of colour just really bring this out just fantastic job on the painting of those sculpts and so we then saw update 45, uh, 47 confirm that that was successfully unlocked and 2.3 million we're working our way towards Don Hayworth from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, so you just keep going. It's that simple. But simple don't mean easy. <laughs> Battles ingrained in Don's mind. It haunts his memories and his violence takes, uh, makes him spring to action before he even registers it. When he dwells on his past, he sees himself as nothing more than a tool for battle, but at least now he's a sharpened tool and can help others. Don's relentless skill uh, grants him rerolls as long as he has any wounds, giving him a measure of control over his own fate. The relentless skill also allows him to cool down from stress at its peak can even keep Don alive when he would die surviving with one health at the cost of strength if he has any. So toughness and swiftness round out his kit, giving him endurance in battle and mobility across the map. Don hopes winning the battle will finally bring him some peace if he comes at the cost of his bloody sanity or both. So be it. There we go. Fantastic sculpt the dog tags there. <laughs> The, uh, the combat gun, brilliant, superb. So we got confirmation he was added to the fray and we have our next episode, the lost episode seven. Uh, so this is update 48, horror in the museum as we were already being um, tantalized with uh, in those previous comments there. So long ago, a mad curator brought hapless victims to his museum to sacrifice to the elder gods. He stored their souls in horrific wax sculptures. His plan was foiled. The poor souls were freed. But now, the cultist has discovered his techniques, and there are many where he has but one 
Fortunately, you know the same techniques, and the best tables are those who are easily turned. History is filled with old nefarious rituals, and the restless forces of the occult have neck to uncover. Unfortunately for them, they are not only the only ones. In the horror of the museum, lost episode, investigators have their own ritual to perform, as tapping the souls of enemies is the only way to disrupt the ritual and bring forth the vulnerable old one. <laughs> it doesn't make the ritual less wicked, though. An investigator sharing a space with an enemy may reroll dice to start capturing their soul into a wax skull. Collecting it for themselves. The ritual, however, requires a human sacrifice of channeling the power of an ancient being to complete it. It is only by sharing a space with the Rand Tagoth, the sacrificing one hostage discovered investigator, um, that the soul is fully locked into the figurine, which can be placed on the board. Wow, so it sounds like a lot of manipulation, a lot of fun to get through this episode. Fantastic mechanics. Uh, the cultist ritual is disrupted when a total of seven wax. Sculptures are finalised. A good step for victory, surely, but still taking its toll. For every sculpt in their space, investigators lose sanity, and for each hostage they have stress. Remember, it's worth fighting for the greater good. It will never be so tough. So you get, obviously, the uh, the episode cards, Monsters of the Mythos, Discovery, the tokens, and a box to hold it all and we've already unlocked not care and rang the goth monsters to be added to this episode and then we had update 49 saw the return of extra dice and anyone who knows either stuff like zombicide or cthulhu death may die this is a absolute dice chucker and you will absolutely want extra dice however this picture i would suggest doesn't do justice to the difference between Extra normal dice and frosted dice. And can I say, I'm fairly sure this is cheaper than we saw even in the first Kickstarter, whether they're just planning to mass produce these more and hence they've broken down the price. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, the difference in their coloration um, and just the look of these frost dice versus the extra dice is miles apart. This green does not do justice. Um, it really is quite a dull green that you get the black is fine but these really are quite dull green they may have changed them they may have changed them from the original but if they haven't i tell you these these there is no competition here guys go for the frost dice i've been looking for these uh, extra sets of these and because they were always kickstarter exclusives man are they expensive i think these were hitting maybe 40 50 dollars 60 dollars um to buy a pack of dice i kid you not guys this is an absolute steal get these whilst they're available if you're back in this kickstarter you absolutely want to be investing in these frosted dice so enhance your rolls with these beautiful frost dice they really do make a difference to your experience i don't know it sounds it sounds weird. Uh, I don't know. It, it almost sounds feeble, you know. It's like it's just a look at some dice. Who cares? But I tell you what, they really do pop on the board, and they do make such a difference to your experience. Just rolling these beautiful, beautiful dice. There's no difference in the um, um, the the look of the symbols. In fact, I would even suggest the symbols on the frost dice are actually easier to read than the symbols on the normal standard dice just because the, the the green on here is so dull like i say it doesn't do justice here to quite how dull a green they look like i say, may have changed they may have um, revised the green material that they were using um but certainly the original frosted dice definitely uh, the way to go so really really happy to see those come back and they have been unlocked so update 50 there was a quick run through of everything so these are all the kickstarter exclusive extra investigators that are coming bear in mind each every single one of these has unique powers so we've got 8 12 16 20 24 20 uh, 24 brand new investigators, each with unique powers and ways to manipulate and um, change up how you're playing. We've got Lost Episode 4 with Hypnos and all the contents and monsters. We've got Lost Episode 5 uh, with Kaziah Mason and Brown Jenkin. And for those who haven't seen it, Cabinet of Curiosities on Netflix, there is an episode in the 
Dreams in the Witch House is an actual episode. I think it was episode five. Um, so if you haven't watched that, go ahead, check that out. You see Kaziah Mason, you see Brown Jenkin. They are both featured in that episode. Uh, and for those of you who are fans of Harry Potter, you also see... Uh, I can't remember his name. The guy who plays... Uh, not Harry, uh, but his co-part, his co-part Ron Weasley, uh, Rupert Grint, um, he also features in the episode. So yeah, highly recommend checking that out. Um, if you've got that facility, worth a look. And um, we saw new Kickstarter exclusive last episode 6, and the colour of... Uh, out of space and the wonderful mutated animals fantastic and again there's a brilliant render of this with uh, featuring nick cage uh, the color out of space was fairly modern um, um it came to the silver screen definitely definitely worth checking that out recommend that um really does that justice that short story and uh, lost episode seven we see the round take off and the not care and we have lots of additional monsters, three Caleptron, um, the MB, four of those, Cats from Saturn, five of those, the Zoog, six of those, and the inhabitant of the Nameless City, three of those. We have lots and lots of unknown monster cards, so we can mix up and match all of Season 1 and 2, and the Unspeakable Box content as Kickstarter exclusive, and of course the Relic Queen Relics, the Skull and the Pumpkin added as additional Kickstarter exclusive. So lots Lots and lots of content if you back this now. So then we have uh, Agnes Forte, uh, Fortin. I mean, Ada Freya 2.4 million. It's only as the light leaves their eyes that I show my face. So when she was young, Agnes never believed the occult would be part of her story. The occult came uninvited, taking everything from her in the blink of an eye, stretching the shadows around her loved ones. She took the morning black and has been fighting the occult ever since. She's developed the silent killer skill, in which she forges, uh, forgoes one space of movement per turn to add two bonus dice when attacking. Lovely. As this girl develops, she turns to recover stress, uh, starts to recover stress and killing enemies which further uh, adds to her control over the dice results and therefore puts a bonus die uh, she gains to greater use. She's an arcane master and making her skills all the more effective. Finally, a lifetime of fighting has got to have toughness. The cult better be ready for Agnes, for her thirst for revenge will be satisfied. Just loving that look there, the sword and the dagger. Fantastic work on that sculpt. And we had coming up next few. Why is it so hot? All of a sudden, could this mean another monstrosity nearby? The Grocus, two monster figures added to the fray. And we reach 2.54 million. So that has already been surpassed. I went to Florida once. Would it surprise me if this came from there? <laughs> Who is to say how this alien race of heat lizards came to Earth and why they chose to stay? Although they don't seem particularly faithful to any eldritch being, they are also not bothered by their wills and plans to bring humanity to their fire ruin. It's bad enough, but when they're destroyed, they're burst into fire. It's even worse when the Elder One advances, they dart and set the investigators on fire spaces. And there's a Grokos of unknown monsters, that means they are now into any episode otherwise would never have fire in them <laughs> fantastic loving that giant fiery lizard being added to the board just just loving that smack of color there uh be great alongside the fire vampires <laughs> Brilliant. So, and then we had at fifth episode, uh, update 52, we had the addition of the All Knowing Pledge. You can go ahead and get this for an even bigger discount, an extra 40 bucks off. Um, for the Core Box Season 4, the Athaqua Elder One, and the Animal Allies Kickstarter exclusive. Plus, of course, you get all of those stretch goals we just went through, that is all included in. In there, uh, so you can have a further look at that. On there, you obviously get the updated shipping information as well. Bear in mind, this is always an estimate, it 
could potentially be that a little bit higher uh, bear in mind in the UK also you do still have to face off the tax and you do get uh, if you want the extras uh, you do have to still buy them separately they are not included with the new content so these are add-ons available for you to add to your pledge right now and then we had um, a new exclusive investigator being unlocked with another unique ability Robert Gray from Charleston South Carolina let's just say my old skills are very much alive and leave it at that <laughs> it's not unusual for investigators to keep their often traumatic past to themselves. Robert's reasons seem different though. His experience in killing, experienced in dealing with bodies, doesn't worry too much about his surroundings. His cold blood signature skill allows him to heal stress when he kills enough enemies and advances on his slaughter track. Yes, he has a slaughter track compared, uh, comprised of a dashboard and a token. The more Robert slaughters, the more levels and other skills he can get. By taking more levels in cold blood, Robert heals more stress and gains bonus dice based on how much he's advanced in the slaughter track. His other skills, marksman and stealth. Yeah, if you did a skilled killer, look no further. <laughs> Fantastic. Just loving that figure there very much. Uh, of the gangster variety. And we have one last update. The adding of Vormi. Four monster figures added to the fray when we reach 2.76 million so for me i can understand their enmity towards us but that doesn't make them an obstacle is the quote always yet another dangerous mystery of the frozen arctic lands quite a mixed combo here with the fire on the lizard and the frozen arctic lands here with the Vormi. worshippers of sothogra their survival to this day and age is impressive and perhaps impossible without the eldritch influence when battling investigators Vormi is a ruthless should they fail to inflict wounds on their target on their first attack they will strike again so these giant frost like troll creatures um, being added to the fray when we reach that next marker so 2.76 million dollars and we are now at 2.71 okay fantastic and you can see that is still changing so if you enjoyed watching this you'd appreciate the walkthrough please leave a comment below let me know if this is something you're interested in seeing more of for other kickstarters um i've really enjoyed doing this for you guys we've got less than 48 hours to go now um will we see that three million maybe let's let, we can only live and hope and uh yeah it's been a fantastic journey thanks for sharing that with me thanks for allowing me to share it with you guys hope you've enjoyed it please please do hit that like, hit subscribe for more content and I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks family.